Paul Martin and Ray the roadie for the rock and roll Chicago podcast. Special edition. Today, it's it the special, special edition. It's our volume two of our video podcasts. That's right. A vodcast. Is we're vodcast. Right? I'm sorry. It's a vodcast. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 So uh, this week we're bringing you the second album, uh, our second CD by Eminem Rush. Am I correct? Okay. On that? You've got two no. of them. Uh, they got more than that. You mean but, uh, we're, br- we're bringing the second one? Yeah, there Look you go. That. I got one too. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are filled with a plethora of original material. Yes, yes, it, uh, yes, it is, and uh, it's got uh, all songs. And this one are written by Carl Mosier. But we'll get to that as we get along, as we go along, and we'll talk to the guys uh, about each of the songs and uh, the recording uh, experience that they had doing it. And uh, just a little bit about each song. Sounds good. Why don't we get to the listening party? Let's do it right now. All righty. Hey, everybody. It's Ray the Roadie with the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast. It's been a whole week since our last time we met up with these guys. This week, we're bringing you their second album, M&R Rush's The Thrill of the Chase. Take it away, Marty. Hey, Ray. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, Happy Saturday to everybody. Um, this is our second one talking about our second album. I'll reach, uh, not reach for the stars. What the heck? <laughs> the thrill, thrill of the chase. Thrill of the chase. Thanks, Carl. Appreciate that. Um, it's, uh, this is the album that we wrote after being on vacation for about 16 years. Um, we uh, went and got uh, what we call real jobs. And uh, we did not play together for 16 years. And so one day we had a party at uh, my house after our annual golf outing. And we went back to the house and my son, Kevin, was playing with his band practicing. And before you know it, we all picked up the instruments and started jamming for the first time in 16 years. And uh, what we did after that is uh, we decided to start playing shows again. You remember that, right, John? Oh, yeah. Yep. And. so when we first got back together and we've decided to get out there and, and, and perform, we wanted to have a product to, uh, to sell to our fans that were interested in getting our music. So the first thing we put out was the CD that we talked about last week, the Rock and Roll Chicago CD, which had all, a lot of songs from the previous years. And then we agreed it was time to put something together uh, brand new. So we talked about going in the studio and recording a new CD. Um, which we did, and it took it took a year. We re- released it in 2004, and what happened was we said, "Well, who's got some songs?" And Carl said, "I got about 20 of them," <laughs> and uh, I said, "Well, I got about 20 half songs." But since and I know the rest of the guys had a bunch of ideas, but since Carl's were finished, we did them all. We we did well, not all 20 of them, right? No, but <laughs> but. Uh, all the songs on this CD were written by Carl. How many we got here, Carl? Eleven. 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 <laughs> so the first one, which uh, was a new one, we have some in here that we re-recorded one or two, but uh, the first one was brand new, right, Carl? Yeah, wrap me up. It's uh, was the new direction for the band because Jeff, uh, I wanted Jeff to sing that one, and. Uh, just I had like the highest range and I, I wanted to test his limits. And so yeah. uh, we, got his, we got his cojones in the vice and we let him sing. <laughs> you remember that, Jeffrey? No. <laughs> no. no actually, I don't remember. Uh, actually, yeah. Actually it was actually I was over my head with it. That those keys were really hard to sing. Yes. I remember. I said, Jeff, you could do it, baby. You could do it. Come on. Come on. You can hit it. You can get it. <laughs> well, you know, what's the wildest part that I remember about that. And Rod, you can chime in on this one, um, is that that 
we did not even hear the song before we went in the studio that day. And Carl taught uh, Roger and I what he wanted us to play on the song, Wrap Me Up. So it was, we got there, we uh, learned the song, and then we played the song. And that was it. I mean, we didn't know what the song was supposed to sound like at all, right, Raj? Yeah, it's exactly right. It, uh, it's interesting. We've done that on several songs where the ideas are there, we play the song, and then it goes down the record, goes down on the record. Uh, the interesting thing about that song, when Jeff, we did it live for the first couple of times, and we actually opened up with that song, and Jeff had to sing those high notes right off the bat. I'm like, I was impressed that he was able to handle that and, and do a good job on it. <laughs> Thanks, Rappy. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, Jeffrey did a great job on the lead vocal, and then as the song started to materialize, I know Carl had ideas for the harmonies, but we just put the classic MNR Rush harmonies in there, and uh, it turned out great. And it's called, what's it called, Carl? It's called Wrap Me Up. <laughs>
Well, that was Wrap Me Up. Next song on deck is Million Seller, and here's mm -hmm. Carl. Yeah, Million Seller, uh, M&R Rush played that song many times during the 70s. And so when we actually, when it came time for us to record that song, it was like really tight. It's like every, we, all the music parts in there just like fit together perfectly. Um, the thing new about this one, this version was, I used to sing half the song and Paul sang the other half for the, for the lead part. But now with Paul and Jeff in the band, I, I wanted Jeff to sing my part. So Jeff sings the, the higher part and then Paul comes in and sings the other, the, the other part during the, uh, during the verse. John came in always like on the bridge and did, did his parts. But that song has great, uh, great double leads in the song. It has a, a lot of flying keyboards going through the song. And uh, I, I got a new synthesizer. I got the Motif 7 and uh, it had a lot of cool sounds. So I, I wanted to get him into that song. And, and I think, and I was just going to say, and I think that's the only song we've ever done where three, three, three guys shared the lead vocals. Yes. We've done back and forth with two guys, but we've never done three lead vocalists. So, yeah. That's very, what I was going to say was I was going to say, I like the way uh, we switch around on the vocals on that one. And it goes from Jeff to me and back and forth. And then John, you do the, uh, you do the, uh, the bridge in there, in the chorus. Yeah, I remember, I remember the change of it that you did, Carl, when we recorded it. You came up to me and you have a great way of expressing drums, you know. You went to me, do this, Marty. And I looked at Carl and says, what the heck is he talking about? But it ended up coming out real good, Carl, because of, of your guidance on how I should start that song out. Yeah, I, I remember the song going through a lot of changes. I don't know, maybe three or four different changes, but I think the final result was the best.
next up is the name of the album itself, The Thrill of the Chase. I'll, uh, Ray, I'll take this one. Um, I just got to say is a uh, typical 70s song. Um, when Carl again comes and, and says to me, this is what I would like you to play. He always suggests what he liked me to play. I didn't listen to him all the time, Carl. But, <laughs> but he, says, he says to me, hey, you need some cowbell in here. <laughs> and uh, so there's cowbell in this song. And the reason why there's cowbell in this song is because of Carl Mosier wrote the song and he asked me to play cowbell in the song. I'm not a big cowbell fan, um, <laughs> but there's cowbell in this song for you, Carl. Thanks. Hey, that's very, very timely, Marty. I just got a new pedal today. Can you cowbell. see my new pedal? <laughs> it's a cowbell pedal. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so John could play that part now, Mark. You guys remember the controversy over the lyrics of the song? I guess no. Not. Well, this is the only song that I have to change words in the song because the guys refused to record it with the words that I had in there. So uh, they they said, "Hey, Carl, we all have daughters. We can't. You can't say that in the song. Remember?" No. I do remember that now, Carl. Yes. And so I we, remember it vaguely, but I don't remember exactly what we said. Okay, the, the, the lyrics were, she grabbed my waist. <laughs> uh oh, wait a minute. Do we want this to be going on now? And, yeah. you know, or what? You want to hear the story? I'm just telling the one line. She grabbed my waist and pulled me close. Okay? That could not be in the song. So I had to change the words to she grabbed my hand and pulled me close. Uh, I thought there was more to it than just that. Well, that's the one I remember. What else was there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't but I don't know, but I don't think we want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> well, let's give it a listen. Okay.
The next song, Rock and Roll Chicago, you might remember we played it last week on the first album. And um, actually the one from the first album, that was the actual version that was on the Loop album. We just uh, did some remixing to it and some tweaking, um, Jeff and I in the studio. And but when we uh, decided to do this new record, we decided to re-record it. And I was extremely happy with that idea because on the original version that made it on the Loop album, I forgot my Wawa pedal at home. And we were at the studio in downtown Chicago and we finished the whole song, the vocals and everything. For some reason, we waited to the end for my guitar solo. And I went to grab my Wawa pedal and it was gone. I forgot it. And as a guitar player, when you're used to playing a solo a certain way for years and all of a sudden it's not there, it's kind of, I was, I felt naked. And every time I hear the solo on the loop album, I cringe. So we got an opportunity to re-record the song and I got to use my Wawa pedal. And it's amazing, it sounds, the song itself sounds great. It sounds almost as good as the original, but with the extra more modern production. But what we're gonna play for you right now, this is a video uh, that a good friend of ours, Bob Reese, uh, who passed away a couple of years ago, uh, he put this video together using some old pictures and collages of them and our rush from some stage shows. And um, he put this little video together and it's of the original version, but we thought it'd be appropriate to play it right now for you. And here it is, Rock and Roll Chicago. Radio Amor. $25 gift. I've been there. In 1980, the airways of the Midwest were dominated by Chicago Radio's 97.9, The Loop. During this time, The Loop released their very first hometown album, featuring Chicago talent. The most requested band from the album, as well as the year's number 45 song for the station was M&R Rush. The song, Rock and Roll Chicago. 30 years later, the Midwest is still rocking to M&R Rush.
Rock Station 97.9, The Loop. Oh, boy. When's the last time you heard that one? It's been a long time, huh? Rock and Roll Chicago. M&R Rush. We're busting out a lot of deep cuts and lost tracks just like that one all weekend long. More of the deep cuts. Oh, Rainbow on the way. Aerosmith and the mighty Led Zeppelin gets the treatment next. Okay, when I'm with you, this, uh, this song was one of those songs where uh, Marty says, you got another song? And I said, yeah, I got one that I've that we've been working on. I think we even play this one a couple of times. But uh, this song, I remember writing it. I wanted, I had a little bit of fun with the lyrics. So uh, like in the first verse, I wanted to see how many words I could use with, uh, with the T in it. So the, the first lines go, when times get tough, I turn to you. Uh, you know, it's so uh, I think I got four T's like in that first verse. So listen, listen and see, see for that. And then uh, at the end of the lines, um, I couldn't decide if I wanted to say, there's no problems I can find or there's no problems I can find. So listen to see what I said, because I don't remember which one I said for, for that part. So, so here is when I'm with you. When times get tough, I turn to you You may not have an answer, but baby that'll do You take me in, your love you never hide When I'm with you baby, there's no problems I can find When I'm with you Baby there's nothing I'd rather do Somewhere to go I spend the time But you are my mind I need you so More than you know So don't hesitate Cause baby I can wait When I'm with you Baby there's nothing I'd rather do When I'm with you I get a totally different Totally different point of beginning of the song how we just harmonized really well together and the song kind of rocks and has harmony and it and it and it ends abruptly but pretty dramatically and uh, I always loved singing the song and I always thought we harmonized great together on this song yeah when I wrote you, John? Yeah, when I wrote, wrote wish I only knew um, we used to do a song by yes called the scene all good people and it started out with harmony uh, and I, I said you know what I want to write a song where we just start out with harmony. So that's where the idea came for Wish I Only Knew, for that. And I can remember we would play like Seton High School or uh, Queen of Peace or uh, any girls high school. And when we would sing Wish I Only Knew, by the time we came around to sing it again, all the girls in the front row were looking at Roger going, Wish I Only Knew, what would make you love me? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
I remember yeah. I remember playing this song um, uh, about two years ago. Uh, uh -huh. We had a request for it. We were playing in Pontiac, Illinois. Oh my God! And, and we had a request for it, and we pulled it off. It came out pretty good. Yeah. We hadn't played it in quite a few years. No. Yeah. I remember that being a big hit in Pontiac too. I remember when back in the seventies when we would play there, they would ask us to play "Wish I Only Knew." So. Well, they, to to show you to show you how far this song does go back, now you guys remember, you remember this. This was how we promoted ourselves back in the mid seventies. This is something many of you may not even know what this is. Jeff, you know what this is. The quarter inch tape. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. This is the first demo we did of uh, Wish I Only Knew, three minutes and nine seconds long, seven and a half IPFs, quarter track. <laughs> and we send this out to the record companies. We'd send this to uh, uh, the clubs so they could see, you know, we were trying to book uh, venues, so we would send this out to them. And uh, yeah, and this one, this one I dedicate to my sister Kathy. This is her favorite M&R Rush song, Wish I Only Knew. Wish I Only Knew. What would make you love me? Wish I only knew What would make you love me? Wish I only knew What would make you love me? A reminder that you're listening to and watching the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast special edition vodcast volume two. <laughs> well, the, the next one is Heavy Metal Christmas, and um, and uh, Carl uh, Carl wrote this song um, uh, 
as he did the whole album, but or the whole entire CD. But um, but this was the first song that we recorded at uh, at Jeff's studio, at Star Trek Studio, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And um, Carl uh, Carl said, "I want to write a Christmas song," and uh, and and he did. <laughs> and it's got <laughs> we have we have jingle bells in it, uh, bells playing, and. Uh, and the words are uh, the words are about a, a guy who uh, who's tired of getting the same old crap for Christmas, but uh, but it's it's a fun song and it's fun to sing. But when, when, I, when I wrote the song, uh, I always wanted it. To, you know, around Christmas time, the stations would pick it up and it would be a popular song. And in 2016, um, it was nominated for the Colorado uh, Rock Music Awards. So uh, we went on down to Denver for the awards. And uh, of course, it was the last award of the night. And uh, a lady by the name of Karen Stevens, her father sang White Christmas before Bing Crosby. She was giving out the award. And she was listing off uh, the songs. And then when it came to us, and she says, and a song from a band in Chicago, I'm going to rush their song, Heavy Metal Christmas. She goes, wow, She's, my dad would have really loved that one. And I, I turned to Bernadette and I said, I said, no way in hell are we winning this one. And then she got the envelope and she opened it up and she said that the winner is Heavy Metal Christmas. <laughs> and so. Uh, yeah, that's what I like to hear. That's good. That's the get. That's it. So, so here it is, guys. Here's Heavy Metal Christmas. Can you see it on there? Yeah. Carl, why didn't we ever get our, I thought you got a copy of that for all of us. I do, I still have it for you. <laughs> it's only been three, four years. What the heck? Hey, what, hey Jeff, I don't know if you remember this, um, about this song. So just to set the tone is, um, we hadn't recorded for 16 or 17 years, right? And uh, when we recorded, it was, it was in uh, analog, right? Yeah. And here we are in, in uh, 16 years later, and I'm, I'm laying down the track for the drums um, and bass, and the track's really going really pretty hot. I'm excited about, you know, the way I played it. And then at the end, there's a little ditty at the end uh, with drums in it, and I, uh, I dropped the stick. And uh, so I freaked out. Um, it was the first time recording in 16 years, and I went nuts saying, oh, man, we got to do that whole thing all over. This is a bunch of crap. And then Jeff, do you remember what you said to me? No. No. Okay. I'll 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 uh, feed you this information though. So he says, Marty, relax, relax. You know, you're like a dinosaur out there. Is that that the new technology is digital, and all I have to do is push a couple buttons on the computer, and we can just we can just slide that ending in with the drums again without no problem. And it was like, whoa, you want to talk about not understanding something that you did a long time recording in the recording studio, and then 16 years later or whatever it was to be told, oh, you, you don't, you have no clue how to record anymore. It was pretty uh, eye opening. Just like, just like this technology that we're, we're using today to talk to everybody. Um, and by the way, it took, took me 45 minutes to, uh, get into this uh, session because uh, my computer wasn't working right. But uh, it's just, that's what I remember, really remember about that song. Is, and Marty wow, has a touch of reality of, of and, learning, and Marty, you know, what the recording process has changed and what it's all about. So. And Marty hasn't dropped a stick since then. <laughs> Paul, you know, Paul, I am so, I never think that you ever watch me when I play, but obviously <laughs> you watch me all the time. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate that. Well, let's let's hear from that sick drop in this song as we listen to Heavy Metal Christmas.
would say uh, share the same dressing room so uh, survivor was changing and then we, we were going up there back back to the dressing room and uh jim peter says to me goes uh hey who wrote that song goodbye baby and i said i said that's that's an mnr rush song he said great hook he said great harmony so uh that was like my high moment and jim peter said that i i wrote a great hook so that was very cool but john, john hey. has more about this song no, I I'm not going to add. I'm not going to add anything. That's a great. Hey, Jim Peter gave you kudos. Let's listen to Goodbye Baby. <laughs> Trying to stay 
everybody. This is the next song. There's not much I can say about it, uh, is, but uh, I'm Dreaming. It's a song that Carl wrote uh, about the Cubs. Um, and as you can see in the background, I'm a big uh, Cub fan. Um, and uh, Carl always writes these songs. He's written a Bear song, a Cub song, a Sox song, right? You wrote a Sox song too, right? Yep. But uh, this one is, uh, is one of my favorite uh, sports songs that uh, we have put together. Um, it's, 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 for me, it's, it just means a lot to me. Thank yeah. you for writing it, Carl. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Marty, if, Marty, if I, I could say one thing about it. Go ahead. Um, I know that uh, some people complain about, uh, about my uh, not giving the Cubs enough attention on stage, and I talk too much about the White Sox. But as a White Sox fan, I broke down and sang the song. So, uh, so there. So I've got the right in order to say, uh, you know, I, I mean, I at least did that. I at least did that. And, uh, and so if I want to talk about the White Sox, I give myself a little pat on the back and go ahead and do that. Paul, you, you did a great job on the song. I love, I love the way I, I asked you not to put the S on Cubs and, you know, because that's the way Harry Carey said it. So you said Cub every time you sang. Cub, and you didn't say Cubs, you said Cub. All the words, Ernie Bank never pronounced a G in his life, so that's why it's I'm dreaming. It's not I'm dreaming, it's I'm dreaming. They're winning. You know, it was it was like if Ernie was was saying it. And well, uh, I try to get as many Cub players from the past into that song. but, but Yeah, no, no kidding, because there's so many words in a song, it was, a, it was impossible to remember them all. I had to have, I a, cheat, had to have a cheat sheet. I know, but, uh, but we were playing somewhere, we did this song, and there was a lady out there that would, when it goes to the middle part where it's saying, you know, all the names of the players, you know, uh, Kerry Wood, very good, and Mark Rosalana put some butter on it. She was just like singing it right along with me. I was going, oh, my God, she knows all the words. <laughs> but well, uh, if we ever play it live, we'll get her out to sing it. That's right, that's right. Uh, but yeah, that's like a history lesson, that song, because it takes it from 79 till what, 2003. So, but, but I wrote it for all the Cub fans that weren't around so they could hear all these names. But uh, here, here it is. I'm dreaming. a young boy back in 69 listening to Vince and Lou on the radio that's when I caught the fever cubby fever something that has stuck with me from oh so long ago when it was Kessinger to Becker to Banks San Garden Line Jenkins, Hope and Pappas at hand and the Vulture by this time Randy was catching Jack's on GN Billy was out by the vines and Mr. Cub had promised us the Cubs were gonna shine I'm Pete LaCock, 
Dave Kingman, Lou Brock, Dick Selma, Joe Negro, Bruce Suter, Manny Trio, Yvonne Hayes, Boot Stay, Bert Hoot, Brian McRae, Rick Russell, Steve Stone, Jim Hickman, Joe Pepitone. When I was a young boy back in 69, listening to Vince and Lou on the radio, it's when I caught the fever. Call me fever, something that has stuck with me from oh so long ago. I'm Carrie Wood, very good. Mark Pryor, he's on fire. Sammy Sosa, put one on Waveland. Voice Salute, two for two. It's Derek Lee, he's three for three. Mark Rezolanik. Put some butter on it. Here's the story. I thought of it, it came to my head. We're doing all these stories right now. And um, when we were doing Goodbye City Lights, um, we, that was one of the first times, if not ever, we had a producer. Did you know that? Anybody remember that? Roman yes, sir. Sachuk. Yes. Roman Sachuk. And he was actually, uh, I was working with him. I was his roadie for Teenage Radiation for a long time. I was his guitar roadie. And when we went in the studio and we were doing Goodbye City Lights, he was talking to me and he says, um, so how's that session going? And I said, uh, it's going all right. And at that time he was working at The Loop. He was an intern with Steve Dahl. He was, the, he was helping Steve Dahl. He was always there. It was, hey, Roman, hey, Roman. And he was always there with Steve Dahl. And um, at that time when we were doing our track, uh, Roman was hanging out with uh, Joe Walsh. And Joe Walsh used to always come into the studio, into Steve's studio, in his robe. And he would go into the studio, and he would show up in his robe, walking down uh, whatever street that was downtown to the studio. And I remember, I remember that whole time, and it was like, that was when Joe Walsh was crazy. Little did I know, he would turn out to be, like, really, really sharp right now. He's really got his game on. But in between that, we did City Lights. When we were doing City Lights, we went in the studio, and uh, Roman was helping me, me uh, arrange the guitars. And it was really cool to have the tricks from another guy who was producing re records, who was working with guys like Joe Walsh, who would say, oh, here's what you do with the guitar to get this stuff sounded. So those kind of things happened. And it was like touching greatness, you know? The band got to touch greatness. That's how I felt. That, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and, and the year, and the year was 1986, and the reason I know that is I have the single that we put out. Here we go. And it says, Goodbye City Lights, 1986, Ready Records, Side A. And you flip it over, first time I saw her, m &R Rush, Side 1. We had a Side 1 and a Side A. <laughs> So here we a, go. That was a great idea. <laughs> and it got airplay. We got airplay in the in the secondary markets or in the Chicago metro area and central Illinois. Yeah, well, regarding uh, Goodbye City Lights, I uh, was always loved the song. I felt it was one of our best recorded songs, even of all the re recordings we've ever done, honestly. Not just because I sing it, huh? But... Uh, it's, uh, it's one of those songs, I think, if you listen to it, it's, it's got a great groove in it, and it's a real positive, motivational song. 
Carl, uh, it's all about uh, going home. You know, that's where paradise is. That's where, you know, he wanted to be. Uh, I've always dreamed about going back to the place where I belong. Part of the words in the song, Goodbye City Lights. Uh, just, just a great song. And uh, it's a great listen. So uh, here it is, uh, Goodbye City Lights. I had one more song and I said yeah there's a song that I wrote uh, the day that John Lennon died uh, I remember being out at a bar out in Calumet City with some of my cousins we were watching a football game and uh, it came on the on television Howard Cosell was saying that, that John had died and, and it, it affected me so that when I went home I just I wrote the song and uh, uh, I could remember recording it in the studio it's it's mainly I think it's mainly uh, just keyboards with a little bit of drums and then on the harmony parts for the uh, Give Peace a Chance, I think that's John came in and did, a, did the Give Peace a Chance on there. <laughs> and I remember Jeff, um, th there's a, a keyboard part right at the end. And uh, 
it's sort of a, a like an eerie keyboard part that comes in there. And when I was recording it, I looked over at Jeff and there were like tears in his eyes. And uh, I said, Jeff, are you crying? And he said, uh, he says, I could feel it. You know, when you played that part, I felt it like if John Lennon was going to heaven. And uh, can't, it turned out pretty good. So here's Never Forget You, John. Saturday. Hey, just want to say thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, checking us out. And if, uh, well, first of all, stay safe, keep your social distance. We're going to get through this thing and we're going to do, we've got lots of shows on the books that hopefully we're going to get to this summer. We look forward to seeing you. And if you enjoyed the, some of this music that you've been hearing, go to Spotify and the other listening uh, outlets that are out there and make your old MNR Rush channel and 
you can hear these things that we're uh, playing for you tonight. Be safe. I just want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and uh, thanks for listening to our stories and listening to, to our music and everyone have a, have a good week and hope to see you next week. Thanks. Hey, thanks for listening everybody. And uh, we'll catch you next week. I want to make a shout out to uh, all the doctors, the nurses, the uh, first responders, EMTs out there who are, uh, who are putting their lives on the line for, uh, for us to stay safe and, uh, and, uh, and, and keep uh, Keep ourselves. Well, hey, we appreciate you guys tuning in uh, on a weekly basis. I think we're going to do another three or four of these uh, weekly podcasts. And we'd like to thank Ray for putting it on, Ray and Paul for putting this on. And uh, just uh, take care of yourself and uh, please wash your hands, use sanitizer, and please be careful. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, we want to thank you for uh, joining us again for this second week on our second album. Um, this is kind of fun for us, new for us, um, not being able to get together and rehearse and get ready for our, our playing out live. Um, so we hope that you're enjoying these kind of things like we are, um, keeping us all together until we can get uh, out of our homes. Um, thank you so much. And again, just like the other guys, I want to thank uh, all of you um, for you know joining us and also, uh, for all the, the first responders, the doctors that are just doing a phenomenal job um, trying to get a hold of this virus and, and getting it uh, leveled out. And we look forward to playing for you live. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Keep on rocking. So that was Thrill of the Chase, the guys from MNR Rush, including me. And, uh, and I'll tell you, they had some stories that, uh, that I didn't even know about. I'm telling you, I, I was very uh, amazed. I mean, the, the one song about uh, goodbye, or not goodbye city lights, but uh, never forget you, John. I thought it was about uh, John Panazzo from uh, Styx. I didn't realize it was uh, John Lennon. No, it was about John Lennon. Carl wrote that one many years ago, uh, of course, when, when John Lennon uh, uh, passed away. But, um, but we didn't record it until, uh, oh boy, I don't know how many years later, but. But, yeah, I think uh, it was about the time that John Panazzo did pass. That's why I thought it, it related to John. I see. Well, it was fun. Uh, we had a good time. I hope everybody uh, enjoyed it. And, yeah, uh, I hope you're washing your hands, staying safe, keeping your social distances, uh, listening to the podcast. Uh, every Tuesday, a new edition comes out. Check yes. us out. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next week. Uh, when we bring you MNR Rush's third CD called Keep On Rocking. Right here on the Rock and Roll Chicago podcast, special edition. Thanks. Bye. Rock and Roll Chicago.